Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul, where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts, which they earn by watching. In this video, we are focused on the exploits of a particular tourist, Envy Silence, who wanted to go over to Jupiter. And I decided to prepare the SLS Wet Workshop in order to send him there in style. Here we have one of the sleeping berths there. It has the upright sort of sleeping bag thing that they use on the ISS, but also a mattress at the bottom, just in case. And I also added a variety of different door and interior textures. You can see a tree thing there, and it's sort of art deco texture. I got these textures uh, from, I think it was the Adobe official thingamajig uh, for Substance Painter. But anyway, I applied them and we have uh, that chair looks huge compared to the computers there because those computers are from the ISS and they're basically little laptops. Uh, the, the chair and the computers are actually properly sized, but obviously they don't fit very well with each other. Uh, so yeah, but potentially MV Science will be able to sit there. There's an exercise machine. This is all in the oxygen tank of SLS, which in principle would first carry oxygen uh, get to orbit and then be emptied of the oxygen, liquid oxygen, and then have all the stuff inside, including an oven, uh, which would convert the cheese, flour, water, and meats into, well, basically a pizza, but food. It's called food. It's not called pizza because otherwise the Kerbal cannot consume it. So anyway, we have a meat package. We've got a cheese wheel, a flour bag, Huge, of course, so that I don't have to have like thousands of parts to represent them. Uh, but yes, an oven can bake the food. It says a pepperoni and sausage there on the meat bag, by the way. And that's why I realized that to flip it around. So yes, otherwise it's SLS, but at the bottom we have a cutout for the nuclear engine that the hydrogen tank will provide fuel for. So the oxygen tank is converted into the habitat in orbit once the launch happens and then the hydrogen tank will get refueled and fuel the the nuclear engine for whatever transfer we're doing in this case it would be to jupiter so i had made water tanks i had made oxygen tanks these are all oxygen tanks with the green top so instead of having a single tank like realism overall normally has we have these preset tanks off the shelf if you will they are actual real water tanks and oxygen tanks. Uh, go figure. Now as far as pa supplying power to this is concerned, I thought about solar panels, but we'd need really large solar panels to work from Jupiter because it only gets 1 25th the sunlight. Uh, so that wasn't very convenient, especially since I also wanted to run ion engines. So I just went with the reactor version of things, a molten salt reactor to power the, the whole ship as well as the ion engines. The ion engines are a necessary supplementary propulsion system because I figured that the hydrogen would boil off by the time we get to Jupiter, of course. So here we are, sort of launching awkwardly within the flame trench on pad 39B. But as I'll show later in the video, it's a very inconvenient pad to use uh, sometimes because the rockets like to explode in it. But we don't have any payload. The payload is basically whatever leftover fuel we have in the hydrogen tank. And I think I underfueled the oxygen. I might not have. It looks like it got replenished. We really should have underfueled the oxygen because we didn't need all the oxygen. So off go the boosters. Otherwise, it's a regular. I mean, I'd say it's otherwise it's a regular SLS. It's a very highly modified SLS, but not as modified as some other SLSs I've done. So yep, it makes orbit, and there we have that. I must have underfueled it. Incidentally, I didn't leave the cheese wheel and uh, the flower bag in because it seemed unlikely that the liquid oxygen would like that or it would like the liquid oxygen. So we're going to send some of that stuff up separately. A case was made during the live stream for this that we probably shouldn't be mixing that stuff with the liquid oxygen. So anyway, we are going to send it up with a Kerbal. We didn't launch the Kerbal either, uh, Envy Silence. And so, I don't know why I'm putting the pizza there, but anyway, uh, we are trying to figure out how to send the extra supplies properly, as well as other things the Kerbal might need, like EVA propellant. Uh, I had made this care package, which, which could carry food, but I ultimately figured out that if we 
actually put enough care packages for a trip to Jupiter, it would be too much, too many parts. But the Kerbal will just basically sit inside this, I think it's the Columbus module, and we're gonna put some stuff in, and I ultimately just used a regular procedural tank for the food I gave up. So, anyway, those are basic supplies, but we did uh, put a cheese wheel, the flour bag, the meats, etc., and the oven, and an EVA propellant tank, that's the yellow topped tank, uh, so that the Kerbal will eventually be able to make pizza on the way to Jupiter. That is the goal. It is important to us that the Kerbals are supplied with pizza. We have to launch the hydrogen as well, so basically we're launching this hydrogen tank to resupply the hydrogen tank that's already up there. And to launch all this, I decided to use a somewhat modified Saturn V. We've got the main stack there, but I added some Raptor 9 boosters. So we've got nine sea level Raptor engines in each of these. We do not have them configured for return. In other words, no grid fin and no little landing fins at the bottom. So yeah, but I tried to put it out at pad 39B and look, it explodes. Unless you place it perfectly, it's not going to work out. It has something to do with the launch clamps. Yeah, nothing wrong with the pad itself. It's just if the launch clamps aren't in the right place, they don't like to make things survive. So yes, of course, we reverted that, went back to the regular launch site. We're a little bit high off the ground because of our placement in order to accommodate pad 39B, and I forgot to move it down again. And off we go. So, yep. Oh, it looks like I uh, lit the engines a little bit early there. They hadn't fully spooled up, I think. Or we were just so heavily loaded. Either way. So, enemy silence off to a great start. There are going to be many problems ahead of us, as you might imagine. That is why this entire video is devoted to this, because, yes, I encounter some problems. But for now, it was working pretty well. We had booster separation, expanded those just before the first stage would otherwise be expended. And here, the first stage is complete. Separation and then the J2s. Lately, I've been modifying the Saturn V quite a lot, so it looks like a Saturn V, but I've been putting totally different engines on. I have no idea if I'll remember exactly what kinds of engines I put on, but those are J2s. That I know. So this was OP for this particular purpose. We have plenty of Delta V left in that stage that we're just discarding. But that's alright. Here we have a Vinci engine there in order to help us get to our target, and of course RCS thrusters. Uh, the problem is, the RCS thrusters decided not to work, and I don't know why. I don't know why they were giving me problems. The Vinci engine was good enough for some steering. I think I had a reaction wheel up front, I forget. But, yeah, we just had the Vinci engine gimbal in order to turn, and we were able to light it enough. But, I think we used a lot of ignitions. So here I am preparing a tug to transfer some RCS fuel. I think maybe we didn't have RCS fuel up there, but we're going to have other problems with the RCS. And I decided to launch it with a uh, New Glenn rocket, even though it's a very small payload, because we wanted to launch immediately and intercept. So we're actually going to do a weird dog leg in order to intercept the target immediately. Because there is going to be boil off, right? There is a hydrogen tank up there with boil off and we want to get to it as quickly as possible without letting it boil off all the fuel. So up we go with the new Glenn, and you can see the sort of maneuver that we have to do. Uh, the mission is in that big thick belt of missions that are all lined up with the moon. And here we are going on to the second stage, and fairing separation immediately. We are in space after all. And we have tremendous delta V, but we're doing this sort of thing to correct our inclination with it. Basically because it's out of phase with Cape Canaveral at this point. And I managed quite a nifty direct intercept of it. And that was very satisfying. You can see the target right there, all on the basically launch burn. Wiggling around quite a lot in order to manage that. And after separating from the little tug, the New Glenn upper stage was able to deorbit. Well, we actually have to do a little bit more than that. There we go. It still has plenty of Delta V. But I think my BE-3Us overperform compared to the real thing. They're at 446 seconds of ISP. 
So we have to figure out where to put this tug, and basically it's just carrying the MMH and Mon 3 here. It wasn't really meant as a tug tug, but we were just trying to make sure that the RCS on this huge thing had its fuel, but I think it was launch clamp getting in the way, but I'm not sure. There wasn't any apparent like enable crossfeed thing, but maybe the, uh, not launch clamp, the claw. The claw might have been getting in the way, but I'm not sure. But in any case, we were not feeding fuel into the main RCS thrusters. I decided to try and claw the stage by the tail. Of course, there's an engine in the way, so we couldn't fit directly in the center of the stage. We had to sort of claw the side there like that. And so it was an uh, inconvenient position and the RCS thrusters on the stage itself still didn't work. The only RCS that was firing was on the little fuel carrier or slash tug. Anyway, I decided that it was time for Envy Science to EVA to help the situation out here. This is what it looked like with the little fuel carrier slash tug attached to it. We need to move that Vinci engine so that the tug can be more centered at least. Maybe then it can use its own engine, but its own engine is really small. I think it was just a 30 kilonewton one compared to the 200 kilonewton Vinci engine that we had. So anyway, MV Silence went out and we were going to, well, it's nice to have this pass-through system. So the whole thing is called a pass-through system with the with the um, SLS wet workshop and this, mod, this Columbus module here. That is all so that they could just move around freely in all the modules. That creates some hassle, but it's also fun to some extent. Anyway, I moved the Vinci engine with MV Silence's help. And then, of course, we had to get the tug in position after getting MV Silence back into his hab chair. An open ended view like that. But, you know, MV Silence is in the spacesuit, so it should be just fine, right? Okay, and grabbing on like that. Now, this isn't the best situation here, obviously. We are in a bit of a mess. The wet workshop wasn't meant to do the docking. It was just meant to hold steady and let this vehicle dock with it, and now we can't dock. In fact, as it is, I don't know how we were supposed to do that. We only have RCS thrusters on one side. It's not good. <laughs> I probably wasn't thinking very clearly at this point. Anyway, we tried to do the rendezvous as best we could, but I decided to, in a fit of haste, use the Vinci engine in the hope that it could point through the center of mass. It was not pointing through the center of mass. And that started us rotating badly. And I do have persistent rotations, so that's a problem. So I went back over to the wet workshop and finished the rendezvous burns with that. And so we got ourselves a rendezvous situation. But this is still spinning. I dumped the remaining liquid oxygen since we don't need that. That was for Da Vinci engine and since we apparently can't use that, we might as well get rid of it. And I decided to create a new tug with a lot of RCS ports and also RCS tanks that were specifically designed so that the Kerbal could move them onto the wet workshop. So we're adding RCS ports to the wet workshop. And again, uh, we're going to try for a direct intercept. It doesn't quite work out as well this time, but in order to do that, I launched out of Tanagashima. It was a more convenient position than Cape Canaveral. But even with the more convenient position, it was too serious an intercept for this to work it out. So we had to wait a little bit for this particular tug slash rescue vehicle, if you will, to manage its maneuver. I, was, I decided to apply ahead of time, but it's a pretty serious maneuver. And there it is. 4,400 meters per second, halfway between the prograde vector and the inclination to normal vector. And anyway, we made orbit. There's plenty of fuel. That's not a problem. But off goes that. We did the orbit the New Glenn stage. And it rendezvoused with our main mission. Again, no Envy Silence here yet. Envy Silence is with the refueler. And this docked to the aperture that Envy Silence is eventually have to, gonna have to go through in order to board. So it's blocking the way right now. Anyway, with that, this has more RCS, but not in the right positions. So that's a problem. 
really this is a story of great Arceus neglect, basically. I really should have put more Arceus ports on everything and it would have been so much easier, but... Anyway, here Envy Science is still spinning and we're still trying to get this under control with that tiny little thing on the tail trying to stop this spin that was created by igniting the Vinci engine, even though it's not in the right position. I thought gimbling would do the trick, but no. Ultimately, I decided that we would just have Envy Science get out while it's still spinning and head on over to move the RCS ports that we needed on the main mission. While Envy Science was en route, I continued to focus on this to hope that uh, to help it stop spinning. Because when you're not focused on it, I think the RCS stops firing. Anyway, so Envy Science did some of the moving that was necessary, grabbing some RCS tanks and RCS thrusters and moving them over to the wet workshop hab side and the hydrogen tank side. So there we go, placing stuff. Eventually, Envy Silence ran out of EVA propellant, though. At least the RCS thrusters seem to be working over here. But yeah, we had to make our way back over to the spinning vehicle in order to grab more EVA propellant there. At least the EVA propellant tank that it has over there is fairly large. So we're not going to run out overall anytime soon. But we have to be very careful with Envy Silence because this thing is still spinning. I tried a few attempts to board the thing while it was spinning, but those were not good. So ultimately we had to wait until it stopped spinning. Fortunately that did ultimately happen, and it happened in daylight, even better. And we maneuvered into the facsimile of the Columbus Hab, and got in the chair with just enough EVA propellant left. Look how little EVA propellant we had left. It was really tense actually. Okay, so this had wandered away, or that had wandered away from this, so we had to bring them back towards each other. And once again, Envy Silence went to work with a full supply of EV repellent in order to get the mission ready, our Jupiter mission. And to do that, Envy Silence blew up some RS 25s, sacrilege, I know, but. They are dead mass right now and we weren't planning to recover them, we just need the nuclear engine on the tail and so they're just hindering things. And then Envy Science proceeded to get the RCS thrusters over to the mission so that we can eventually let go of that extra, I don't know what to call it now, tug? I got, I'll still call it a tug. Our rescue thingamajig. Okay, all that done. We need to point the two things together so that they can dock so that the hydrogen can be transferred in and Envy Science gets back into the pseudo Columbus module. And we let go of that little thingamajig so that the docking port is free. And here they come together. It's tough because they, neither side has particularly good RCS. We're short of our RCS fuel overall. Yep, just a tale of RCS neglect, like I said. But ultimately, it all gets joined up. There we go, final little push. And the fuel transfer can begin, so that we can finally make our journey over to Jupiter. With all that done, I decided it was time for Envy Science to actually board the wet workshop. And so, leaving the seat, Envy Science picked up some of the stuff that we had carried up, the flower, the chair actually, very important, the EVA propellant tank, and a pizza, and headed on over through the tunnel, and we opened up the hab, but the whole thing was spinning for some reason, and that was a problem. This is not the direction you want to spin for artificial gravity, not that we want artificial gravity at this point, and the spinning made it hard to place our props, if you will, the flower bag and all that business, and even to see where the heck Envy Silence was going. So I had to stop that. But anyway, all that business was taken care of. It took two streams. This was like eight hours of gameplay. So we still need to transfer Envy Silence over to Jupiter, and that will be the next video. For now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. 
and I'll see you next time.